Mega is an improvised satire from Hiya, the staff I'm of Hallie a fictional Levant, mega church. This is Mega, coming to you from Twin Hills Community Church, where every single week we're giving our mega church a tiny family feel. Ooh, we love to introduce you to members of our church staff and people from our community. I always find it to be a treat and a treasure. And per usual, I'm joined by my co-host. He's the youth pastor for our high school ministry called Climax. Please welcome Gray Haas. I'm down with G-O-D. Yeah, you know me, Hallie. How are you? Ooh, so blessed and so excited for today's guest. Well, just like one member of the Trinity is a ghost, our guest today is here to talk about all things Halloween, but in a godly way. Please welcome back to the program, Claire Forskin. How you feeling today, Claire? Oh, guys, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back. What is this outfit that you've got on? I have never seen. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. What is oh this a costume, gosh. or is this what is it? Thank you for asking me. Um, so my grandmother did pass away recently. Oh, I'm sorry. And, no, I was so blessed to be able to go through her closet and pick out a few pieces. And I this is something this. that she got from uh, Kato's. And so I guess you could say it is a costume of sorts. Oh, oh I cool. love that. It's kind of a you pumpkin pa a pumpkin pattern, I guess. A pumpkin it's a patch pumpkin pattern. pattern, but it's got black cats on it as well. But you can't oh, really see I them because they blend into the black of the sweater. You know, Very so it's just nice. like a festive little Halloween sweater. Um, nothing that I would let my kids see because uh, <laughs> it is a sin. Um, the cats and oh. their their sexual sort of the arches in their back. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. But is, since yeah, I was yeah. hanging out with a couple of adults today, I said, why not? Wow. I never thought about that with cats. They re That really is a unwholesome animal. I mean, sometimes the females mm -hmm. go into heat. I mean, that is not okay it's not okay it's not, it's the devil in their flesh trying to tr tempt your children um oh. and so and i had to learn that the hard way and <laughs> that oh. that's oh. something oh, we can get right? into on another on another um one of these small talks well, oh yeah well i did see you um I, you know, one of your kids is now in climax, and I did, uh, I did get the email from you that said your 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 son had had a some kind of sexual experience around a cat, oh, and I didn't, I didn't no. want to ask any further questions. Yes, and we appreciate you not asking any further questions. But since we, we, I mean, I, I don't think he would mind me telling you that he did get his first, um, gosh, what do we call them? Uh, one of those holy stiffies from the lord around oh. around the cat because your first one is a, a boy's first yeah. erection yeah, yeah. Okay. is yeah. the i would say the deepest but it's uh it's a gift from god and you know they can't really control what they are responding to um and it just happened to be our family cat potatoes oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Potatoes oh. is a very sexual cat by nature, even more so than regular cats. And so and it, it wasn't Jackson's fault and it wasn't Potatoes' fault. We did have to put her down. But, you know, that's what parents do for their children. And that's what the Lord did for us whenever he gave us Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And that's I, I felt like Potato was Jesus Christ. OK, well, that. Wow. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I guess I am sorry we we did that we did go that far into it because it's really not the reason that we had you here today, which is. But wait, uh, great. Okay. I mean, if I may offer you a word basket of encouragement, Claire, it could have been much worse. You're such a good parent and um, it could have been much worse, you know, just getting you know maybe his first you know so and so uh it could have been worse you know so a dog or a cat has been known to lick a wiener you know what i mean Hallie. they think it's a toy or something and that's gonna set little boys up to think that that's something that can happen with another person's mouth so i think you got off easy i i and i agree like thank god it wasn't the family dog michelangelo that licked jackson's wiener and we'd have to put Michelangelo down. I have a special connection with Michelangelo for different oh, reasons that I can't oh, get into good. here. Oh, and really? That, oh, was yeah. that about? Okay, yeah. I don't. I'm not going to ask about any other reasons that we shouldn't get in, 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 into anything. I guess. Well, since you did ask about it, I would say that Michelangelo. You know, when Rob and I split, Michelangelo was really all I had. You know, Rob and I did get divorced. Oh no! And um. On those lonely nights, you know, mama needs a cuddle. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but Michelangelo, yeah. he doesn't know necessarily when to stop. Yeah. Um. So, but thank God, thank God he keeps that for me and not for Jackson. <laughs> Have uh, you guys heard from Rob? 
no, and no, we haven't. And okay. we were sorry to hear that that you all did split. And mm -hmm. I guess I, you know, I I won't even ask about that because it's not really the reason that we had you here today. I'm so glad to hear you're a dog person, though, because I love my Frenchies and my Corgis, and I too had an inappropriate thing happening with one of my dogs. Uh, one of my <sighs> Frenchies liked to jump in the shower with me when I was in there bathing, and I said, "This is not appropriate at all." And He's you were naked. He was going to see me unclothed. And I just said, absolutely not. I have to lock him out of the bathroom because he gets one of those lipsticks down there between Hallie. his legs. I know that lipstick well. I know that lipstick well. Oh, he's just their little boys, though. They can't help themselves, you know? Right. And, and you're so beautiful, Hallie. Oh, Claire, you're such a babe. I can't even stand it. I bet if you would walk down the street, you'd have 12 dogs chasing you. You're so gorgeous. I that just is don't... So, oh, that is so kind of you to say thank you so much. Well, the reason that we had you here today, Claire, is because you famously ran one of the you know, the most popular hell houses here at Twin Hills last year. And now, I mean, I am seeing your handiwork all awesome. over the greater Indianapolis area because you have now opened Malloween. Can you tell us a little bit about the expansion of, of your hell houses? And, you know, we definitely don't even need to get into any of that um, dog stuff anymore. Sure, sure. Um, so we'll put a pen in the dog stuff. The Halloween, happy Halloween to you guys. If you oh. don't know what Halloween is, uh, it's just God has allowed us to take our hell house and spread the word of hell to even more people in the community and underserved portions of the community, like the folks that live behind where the radio shack used to be. Uh -huh. We can tell them about hell now. Awesome. And they really need to know about it because I don't mm -hmm. know if you've been in those neighborhoods, but oh. they have signs in their yard that say, in this house, we believe in science, you know, and uh, that hurts mm -hmm, my heart. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my kids seeing that. So to be able to to set up shop in that strip mall where the abandoned radio house is, Radio Shack, <laughs> I call it Radio House, um, and to be able to reach those families and and uh, and and spread the word of Christ to them, it's been a real blessing. Awesome. Well, I mean, because malls I've noticed are really shutting down. It just seems like there's a lot of abandoned malls, which I guess means you've got a lot more real estate in which to operate these, these oh, totally. houses now. Yeah, we've got strip malls. We've got regular malls. We have those sort of outdoor malls. Oh, like um, an outlet center. Like an outlet center. Uh-huh. We're, we're operating out of um, uh, J. Crew, where the oh. J. Crew, J. Crew used to be in the outlet center. Um, it's, uh, and you can still smell the stench of sin in the J crew, but, uh, I think we're really making a difference there. And that J crew now is one of our most popular rooms in that hell house. Oh. And yeah, it's our Taylor Swift room where you get to go to a Taylor Swift concert. Oh, oh I, I bet the, that's popular. I bet that's really popular. It and is What popular. happens in there with Taylor? Well, you go into the Taylor Swift concert in your front row, which is every little girl's dream. And then on stage, Taylor has these giant snakes come out from either side of the stage and she starts speaking in tongues. She's obviously been possessed by the devil. And so you, as a person who loves Taylor, you got to get that devil out of her. And yep. that's what you do in the Taylor Swift room at the J group. Awesome. Do you think, uh, and this isn't a critique as much as an observation, are you able to really generate the same feeling as being in a taylor swift concert as it as as you are when you're in a sort of an empty j crew room at an outlet mall absolutely and thank you so much for asking so i actually i play the taylor swift um which because you know um i've got brown hair um, and she used to have brown hair too. And we're both like, you know, I'm six, seven. I don't know how tall she is. Um, but I, I know how tall. Yeah, I'm very yeah. tall. I'm very tall. Thank you. And I spent a lot of time around horses. So I sort of know how to clomp around because she does that, you know, that stage clomp like a Budweiser horse, like a Cladsdale. And so I really spent a lot of time practicing and, and watching the Cladsdales that we have Roman free in our yard so I could emulate that walk exactly. And so many people have said, wow, this is just like seeing Taylor Swift. 
Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is amazing. Now, for people who might not know about what a hell house is, let's tell them the origins, you know, because we're really, as the church is trying to point people away from wicked uh, from wicked holidays like Halloween, where it's celebrating ghosts and goblins and ghoul and death. And here, you know, we have Jesus is the is he, he gives us life. You know what I mean? And so um, we want to point people away from that holiday, but still stay on theme. And we've got a scary theme in our pocket, in our Bible, frankly, because we've got hell awaiting everybody who doesn't love Jesus. And um and so in the past, you know, maybe tell people about what some of the hell houses have included and, you know, like why we've developed this around Halloween. Well, um, death is coming for us all. And uh, if we don't love Jesus the right way and there's a very specific way to love him, we are going to hell. And hell is very scary. Hell is not like a cool place. It's not like Euphoria no. on HBO. It's um it's it's scary down there. They've got gay stuff going on in hell. Oh no! Um, I'm trying to think of what else is scary. Oh, gay pro- stuff. Did I say? So there are drag queens and stuff in hell. Oh, oh no! Um, there's probably mm. banned books. There's probably cigarettes and drugs. Kids can read whatever and- they want. Oh, Kids can read whatever no. they want, and they do have bait pens in hell. And so oh. we're just really trying to avoid that. And um, the only way to do that is by love and cross. And so in our in our hell houses, we do have different scenarios of things that could uh, maybe get you to hell faster. You know, and so you walk into one of these scenarios, so you know what to avoid in the future. You know what I mean? So you know what to look out for. Like if you're at a Taylor Swift concert and she starts speaking in tongues, you'll know what to do. Right. If you um, go to a baby shower and you find out that it's a baby shower for a lesbian couple, uh, that's one of our rooms. So you'll be equipped with what to do in that scenario. And these are very scary. That's why we say oh, kids 16 and up. But still, people do bring their younger kids. They do bring their younger kids. But well, it's I, quite traumatizing. I heard from some of my teens who did go the other night. They they told me all about uh, the 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 lesbian. Um, uh, they did tell me all about the lesbian baby shower room because they said they knew they said it was kind of like an escape room where all of all of a sudden they looked around and just everyone was in LL Bean and they knew pretty pretty instantaneously like, oh, these are going to be a bunch of lesbians. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we 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 did spend a lot of money on LLB. Well, that LLB in the outlets, it was going out of business because we were in the process of buying out the outlets. And so now we, we've got all that LLB, you know, satanic clothing to put on our lesbians. And they're not lesbians. I've vetted every one of them. They are heterosexual women, oh, um, but they do do a good job of playing lesbians. And it is quite traumatizing. Um, and it's almost impossible to, to get out of. Uh, there's We have a kid that's been stuck in there for the past three days. He's been in the lesbian baby shower room and we have a rule, no helping. If you get oh, stuck okay. in there, it's yeah. Cause you know, you teach a man to fish for a day, yep. it, fish. Yep. He's going to go to a pond. That's right. Right. You know it. And that's you what we it. say. Um, so good luck to, uh, <laughs> to, um, to Daniel oh. trying to get out of the, the lesbian oh, baby shower. Daniel. Room. Well, Daniel and the lions. That is right. No. Do you ever have kids who are like, Ooh, a vape room. I think vaping's cool. And they like it when they're supposed to be frightened of it. Yeah. That's been our number one problem with the vape room. That's been our oh. number one problem with the vape room. Um, and that is still, and that's still just operating in a headshot. Well, he wouldn't it's say, still like, just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, and, and is that how how is that set up? Because I did I when I look when I went by the Keystone at the Crossing Strip Mall the other day and saw the one that you had just set up, the only store that was still in that strip mall was a vape shop. So sure. is that right? Is that just part of it now? That's just part of it now. Um, because we couldn't buy them out, we were like, you know, you know, they wouldn't get out of that strip mall, and so um, they're still there, and we're just sort of we funnel the kids into into the the head shop. And I told this gentleman at the counter, I told him he's like a 16 year old kid named Brandon. I was like, listen, when they get in here, you know, you need to scare them. This needs to be scary. They need to know not to do this. And he was like, oh yeah, I got it. I got it. But these kids really are seeming to love the head shop, you know? Uh And, um, I don't know if they're scared at all, actually. Um, I'm scared because I went into the head shop and they have bongs that look like penises, you know? And that scared me. 
Uh, but the kids well, don't seem sure. to be scared of it. They seem to I think it's funny. That's the one problem I will say that we have with our uh, Halloween this year. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. yeah. I guess when you can't move out certain businesses that don't really fit in with the, the gist of the whole hell house, it can be problematic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, think I was thinking that. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Before we move on from Head Shop, uh, I was going to just throw this bit. Um, oh. I asked too, I've lost myself in my cans. Is, is this on the end? Yes. You lost yourself? Yeah. I don't hear us, but I hear Bram. Oh. Check, check, check. Oh, yeah. Um, um, or headshot? Well, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. I did have uh, an experience with that very same place where I went in, uh, you, you know, I was walking by it rather, and I, I saw some of my, my teens from Climax had been hanging out there, and then eventually they just get part time jobs there. <clears throat> and then, you know, they're, now they're doing vape competitions. And oh. I'm going, what is a, a vape competition? Apparently, they all go down in the basement and they vape up a bunch of this vape juice. And then they play they, they play a bunch of Skrillex and then they, they do tricks with the smoke. What? Wow. Tricks wow. with the smoke. Have you ever do, heard of anything more they, they devilish? Do, oh, I know. It's I they, they know. do smoke tricks, Hallie. I've Especially seen it. Especially because it should be vapor and smoke is coming out. My goodness. I know. Oh, like they'll no. they'll do like a big ring and then try to jump through it. Uh, I bet they learned that stuff from Gandalf and Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And America's Got Talent. Oh, really? Uh huh. Wow. People jump through all kinds of hoops on America's Got Talent. <laughs> That, that really upsets me because um, I've told my kids, the only vapor that you're allowed to be around is the Holy Spirit, who we know yep. does come in vapor form. Yep. That is right. That's cool. Oh, that's right. Speaking you can of probably jumping vape through- up God if you want. Oh, and I would. I would. I like to stay high on Christ and spread the word. Sorry, I cut you off. What were you going to say before, before the? Soon. Oh, I, I still remember. It's oh, yeah. Never quote nothing. So keep going. Uh, yeah. Speaking of jumping through hoops, isn't that? Oh, and I'm sorry. What was your uh, husband's name that we said this time? Rob. Rob. And speaking of jumping through hoops, and I'm sorry if I'm bringing this back because I maybe I shouldn't, but what, didn't didn't he end up leaving his medical practice because he was doing that hoop that whole hoop uh, talent thing? Yes. Um, well, he was asked to leave his medical practice oh. because of the hoops, because of the hoops, because he and um, the uh, Ukrainian girl that he has started to see, woman, Ukrainian woman, oh, she's very yeah. flexible. She's an acrobat and uh, oh, and he holds the hoops yeah. and she sort of jumps through the hoops and does all sorts of freaky things. And, um, and uh, they're just friends. I don't want anybody to think that anything's going, you know, um, Rob would never start a relationship with anyone after him, but, um, yeah, they've, they, they've gotten really big. They have a YouTube video that's gone viral. Um, they're big on the TikTok. They, um, are going to be on the season of America's got talent. And, uh, for some reason, NBC's the voice. Oh, oh. wow. Mm-hmm. What will they be doing with their voices? Still the hoops. <laughs> Oh, wow. Still the hoops. Wow. Rob can jump through any hoop. Well, I was thinking it might be a fun exercise for you, Claire, since you got to always be wrapping your mind around different ideas regarding hell and different hellscapes and different horrors and tortures and all of the misery and angst and gnashing of teeth that is awaiting everyone who doesn't devote their life to Christ. Um, I was thinking it might be a fun exercise for you to to imagine heaven. And I wanted to ask you, like, if you were going to, um, what would you hope for from heaven? If you were going to build a heaven house, that would be your perfect heaven. What would it be? Because God is going to prepare it for you in paradise. Oh my gosh. That's such a wonderful question, Hallie. Um, I think my heaven would definitely have, um, those big fluffy bath sheets from QVC, QVC brand bath oh, sheets yeah. that cover my whole body. Cause I am six, seven. And I just like to wrap up in those bath sheets and feel like I'm a tiny little worm. Um, oh. I, I, so, but other than the bath sheets, I would just say, you know, um, well, it's embarrassing, but I would like for my heaven to have, um, I can't say it. I can't say it. Oh, you go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. Well, it's okay. Some things are between us and God. Oh, I'm sure it's not that bad, Hallie. 
I don't know if I can say it. I don't know if I can say it. Sorry, give me a well, second. Do we want to go well, back I to the dog thing? Uh, I was wondering. Sorry, I, oh, got, yeah. a dog I got dog. high. Yeah, we do want to go back oh, to the dog oh, thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you while you're thinking what my heaven would be, I would have dozens of dogs and I would have pasta all the time. The world's best pasta. I would have fettuccine Alfredo and cheesy breadsticks on the side. I would have cheesy garlic bread on the side. I would have glazed donuts and I would have massages every single day from a female angel, you know, not a, I don't need like Archangel Michael or any of them, you know, because I'm, once I'm in heaven, I'll have a perfect body. So I don't want to tempt anyone. So I would have female massages daily, foot massages daily, glazed donuts, lots of fettuccine Alfredo, lots mm. of different bread sides and lots of dogs. I see that's I, I also would have lots of dogs. Um, but the thing I couldn't um, I had I went to Disney World um, recently and I met Goofy there and we kind of had um, oh, wow. a spiritual connection and it's too soon right now. But and I don't want to scare him off. But in my heaven, there would be Goofy and it would be the Goofy that I saw at Disney World on October 11th, 2023. That's awesome because I know Goofy is well over six foot. So he's mm -hmm. up there in your stratosphere. Exactly. And I feel like a little girl again talking about like my crush. <laughs> this is how I felt when I met Rob um, until, you know, everything that happened. Uh, well, I think I think QVC sheets and Goofy is probably really attainable. Mm -hmm. and you think so? I, I would hope so. Yeah. Definitely. And guess who was tuning in to hear you say it? The big man himself. So he's preparing it for you. I just know in your palace. <gasps> oh, my God. I forget. He's always listening. God, of course. <laughs> I, that means a lot that you guys are always know what to say to lift me right up. And because and, I, I don't know if I'll ever see Goofy again. Um, but you're right. God hears my prayers. And he even hears the prayers that I don't pray out loud, which is scary. That's true. It can be scary, I know, it, which is sometimes I'm like, are, thoughts, uh, are all thoughts prayers is, is a good question, isn't it, Hallie? Wow, that's a beautiful question. That Have y'all been it, to the Hell House yet? I'm so sorry. I I haven't I haven't seen uh, this years. I've, I've I have driven by. I'm really curious about the whole euphoria uh, part though, because my <laughs> teens were saying that you go into one room and there's just a bunch of overdose teens all over the floor. Yes. Overdosed on sugar, though, because they're not doing cocaine. We did oh. have the the police did come and check it out. There was a little bit of cocaine found one night, but we made oh, sure no. to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. oh, we wow. made sure to get rid of that. Oh, well, I think that is I mean, that is terrifying. If you go into a room and you've just got a bunch of dead teens all over the floor with white powder all, all over the faces, I think that's getting it across. You would think so, but it's kind of beautiful in a way. You know, I think we could be doing more to make it scary because you walk in on a bunch of supple body teenagers lying peacefully on the floor covered in what? You might say, is this heaven? Uh, yeah, well, okay. uh, yeah, that yeah, is true. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. wish my teens would settle down like that sometimes, actually. Gets a bit, gets a bit wild. Give them some fun dip. Do you think every... Uh, or what, oh, uh, so... In this expansion of, of the Hell House concept, have you thought about trying to add hell into the other holidays? Because uh -huh. when I think about it, you know, Thanksgiving to me really is the, the, the most hellacious one. I mean, people are just so obnoxious and travel and everything else. I wonder if you could do a Thanksgiving house. Oh, you know, we probably could. And you're right with Thanksgiving. You, you're, you know, people are always stuffing their hands in those birds. Uh, just yes. stuff in oh, their fists that and the birds. Inappropriate. Oh, that would be a good room. And then you could have a whole room full of lesbians around a dinner table talking politics. Yes. Yes. You could have um, a room where the lesbians have parked their Prius and you can't get out. So you have to go back in. You have to ask them, can you back out so I can back out so I can leave? Can you back out your Prius? And uh. then they say, you can have my keys. And I say, I don't know how to drive a Prius. And and then it's just you're never getting out of there. I think that would teach people a lot. That's honestly terrifying when I think about it. Being trapped mm -hmm. in a packing lot mm -hmm. by a by two lesbians in LL Bean in a Prius uh -huh. and nobody knows how to drive it. And wow. nobody knows how to drive it. And you cannot get the lesbians out of the house because they won't stop talking about their trip to Morocco. Oh uh, wow. 
where they proposed to each other, and it was a surprise to both of them. Is that where they go to do it? That's where they all go there to do it. And they all say, um, oh, I was going to propose to her, and, and she was going to propose to me, and we didn't know. You knew. You knew. I just don't like them trying to take our thunder. Why Morocco, do you think? Yeah. Why Morocco? Well, it's it's because the way it's Morocco. 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 Mm-hmm. It just sounds like it, it just rolls like off the lesbian, of lesbian tongue. Exactly. It really does. Hello, it my really, name's Morocco. Morocco. Yeah, that it is. Yeah, it really does. It really Morocco. does. If I ever met anybody named Morocco, I'd instantly think lesbian. I would think lesbian too. I would think dog or lesbian, you know, Morocco. 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 I mean, because the word rock is in there, you know, and rock hard is something that they're never going to get. So, you know, maybe it's it's a it's a sense of longing. Maybe they're there looking for something. Maybe they're there looking for, you know, a man not even realizing. I think you're on to something, Holly, because you you break that word down and it's more rock rock. Oh, oh, Oh. more More rock. rock. Oh, oh, right. Which is what happens. I don't really know if I am following you, it. But. Oh, no. Well, the last part is a, sort of an expression that, you know, females, you probably don't know this, Gray, since you're not married yet. But a lot of times when a woman is having intercourse, what? she'll make noises that are like, oh, like that. Oh. They make noises? Like, oh. oh, oh, they make noises. It's usually when something has a, like, we remember something like, oh. You know, oh, remember what? I need to pick up the kids. I forgot to pick up the kids yesterday. The kids are in the car still. That's what you're thinking about during it? Well, intercourse is a good time to go through your mental to-do list and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's just nice also to just be flat on your back. And so you get some time to really think about your life and, you know, what you want out of it and what's happening, who you're mad at right now for talking bad about, just stuff like that. Exactly. I mean, that's Rob and I were having intercourse when he decided he wanted to leave me. Is I was lying flat right? on my back. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, well, I think it thinks. We should keep going into that. That's so funny. I don't want to be the one to ask, though. <laughs> you should ask because it's a great one now. Um, I just don't know. I, yeah, I, I guess I don't know if that's a detail I need. I need I'm to... just so sorry, Claire. <laughs> it must have been, you know, because intercourse is such an emotionally bonding moment for the female. And we know that males are more visual. They just want to see what they're, you know, pounding away at. And they want to have these visual fantasies. And they are having this big physical reaction, you know, with blood coursing through their veins and stuff but that must have been a really difficult time to learn that your husband was leaving you how did he was it something that he whispered in your ear or did he just run out the door i felt rob's member go cold go completely cold (gasps) like a frozen hot dog in an apple pie and your body temperature in there is 98.6 so to is go, right? uh huh. So to go hot in a ninety-something degree area, to go cold in a ninety-something degree area is something else. It makes me wonder: is there something wrong with me? You know, <gasps> right. is there something wrong with me? Because I felt it go cold, and I said, "Are you leaving me? You're leaving me, aren't you?" <gasps> and he really couldn't. He wasn't able to respond in that moment because we do. So when Rob and I made love, we did it with um, what we called God's treasure chest. Awesome. And so he did have something in his mouth at the moment he was making love to me. So he couldn't really respond verbally, but what emotionally have- I felt it. What was in his mouth? Well, um, great. Um, like, like Holly said, whenever you're married, I'm sure this is something you'll understand, but yep, it was a yep. ball gag in his mouth. Oh, and a ball gag is just something like we made ours at home. You know, you can kind of make it out of make it out of anything. So ours was an apple tied in a handkerchief on both sides. And he just had that in his mouth. He just needed something to bat down on. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of that. Sometimes I take one of those rugby balls or tennis balls in there with me for intercourse. And I have it under my shoulder blades massaging me in case my body's moving up and down. I'm getting a free <gasps> massage from a from a ball back there. So balls can be useful, I think, in bed. This might be my own personal Absolutely. hell house. 
There's nothing wrong with balls. All different types of balls. They could be Racket useful. balls, tennis balls, Pickle basketball. Balls. Pickle balls are the best, those wiffle balls. I mean, this is Indiana. We're in Hoosier country. We love basketball. Any pickle, kind of ball. Any kind of ball. But pickle balls almost have as many holes as I do as a human woman. And that's really interesting. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess how many holes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't nine. really know if we should end how on counting How many do we holes? have? I mean, I, to be honest with you, Claire, between you, me, and the lamppost, I'm not exactly sure how many I have down, you know, in that area at the top of I'm my thighs sure and the in-between part. I know there's definitely, uh, but I don't know if two are connected. I don't know if it's two or if it's three. Um, because I've also never looked and I use a very thick loofah in the shower so as to never touch my naked body. That's so smart. no idea what we're talking about. Well, Jesus had three holes, one in his hand, yep. one in his other hand, yep. and one in both his feet. Yep. That's right. <gasps> wow. And then one in his butt. <laughs> and I guess one in his face that he preached out of. That's true. One in his little dingling. Oh my goodness. I've never he, thought he had about to go pee -pee. Christ having a member. Yep. Yeah, but he had to tinkle. I'm sure of it. Well, tell us when we can arrive at the, um, <clears throat> at, at the hell house or at the new Halloween, uh, uh, Claire. I'm just... Um, well, we're open from seven 30 in the morning to nine 30 PM at night. Um, currently the, <laughs> The mall, Malloween, where the, you know, the traditional mall was in town, that one's open 24-7 right now until we get uh, Brandon out of there. Daniel? Um, Brandon? Daniel, yeah. uh, oh, Daniel, I think it was Daniel. Yeah. It, just until we until we get him out of there. Um, and what room is he in again? Uh, uh, he oh, was he in was the... in the vape room, isn't he? No, I think or he's was in he another in the, room. He was in the yellow bean lesbian room. Oh, yes. Yeah, he didn't want to leave the lesbians. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to just? You could just do that line again. <clears throat> As Daniel. Okay. Um. Currently, uh, the the LL Bean lesbian room is open twenty four seven until we get Daniel out of there because he is currently still stuck in the LL Bean lesbian room. Um. <sighs> but other than that, yeah, nine thirty a.m. to or seven thirty a.m. to nine thirty um at night. But really, okay. whenever God lays it on your heart, we're not going to turn anybody away. Well, thank you for closing it up thank early yeah. because I always tell my kids nothing good ever happens after 10 p.m. So I'm glad they can come have fun in the hell house and be home by curfew. They sure can. And I, I look forward to seeing your kids. I, I will be the one playing Taylor Swift on stage, talking in tongues, awesome. being awesome. possessed. And Galloping I hope around. they figure out how to help me. Was there one more thing you wanted to tell us about your dog or... No, I think, I think we brought, I, I don't know how about my dog. Well, I just want to, if my dog's listening right now, I will say, Hey honey. Um, I love you. Thank you for everything you've done for me in this Tron Tom. And I'm looking forward to seeing where this is going. <laughs>